Hi, welcome back to my channel, Marin Makes It. I'm Marin, and in part one of my car camping series, I showed you guys how to set up a bed inside your car. Today in part two, I'm gonna be talking about some of the other things that will make your camping experience a lot more fun and comfortable. If you didn't watch part one, I'll link it at the end of this video and also in the comments down below, but you can watch part two and then go back and watch part one. If you watched part one, then thank you so much for coming back to my channel. And without further ado, here we go. So now that we've talked about the bed, we can talk about some of the other logistics of sleeping in your car. The next thing that you're going to want to think about is how are you going to get the car to be dark at night? So this is both for practical reasons, if you don't want to wake up at the crack of dawn, um, and also for security reasons, because you don't want people looking in your car and seeing you sleeping there. Obviously, this is a lot less private than sleeping in a van or a car with tinted windows, but there are things you can do to keep people from seeing in and seeing you sleeping at night. An additional benefit of doing this is if you get something that is reflective, you can also use this as a way to control the temperature in your car. You can definitely end up creating a sort of greenhouse effect where it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter in the car. And this is one way to combat that. Well, I got these window coverings from Amazon and I really like the solution. So one side is reflective. So I was able to use that for that temperature regulation. The other side has bubbles on it. So that side ends up usually facing inward to me. This shade is magnetic, so it just magnets onto the side of the frame of your car, and it is actually really easy to put up. And I really thought that was important too, because I knew that something with Velcro, something with hooks, or something that would be more of an ordeal to put up, I would probably get lazy and not want to do it. You don't want this to be taking up a ton of time every night, especially if you keep moving your location and you're resetting this up every single night. When I first started out traveling, I actually started with garbage bags that I would just roll down the window a little bit and then try to tuck them in over the top and then quickly roll the window back up. And while that definitely worked as a visual barrier, it was kind of a pain to do because sometimes the garbage bag wouldn't perfectly stay in all along the frame and then I'm doing it multiple times and then I have to crawl over and do the other windows and it was taking me kind of a long time to set it up every night. So I'm really glad I made this investment and bought these from Amazon. Um, an additional thing I really like about this is that because they're magnetic, you can rip them down really quickly. If you were in a situation where you no longer felt safe and you wanted to make a quick getaway and start driving right away, you know, it could also just be if you woke up late and you're in a rush and now you got to get out of your campground really quickly. For the back window shade, obviously it's a little bit different because it is at an angle like this. So to cover it is a little bit different, but you can basically use a front window shade that people use that you know, people will put in their car even when they're just going into the grocery store just to prevent the front seats from getting so hot. Um, you can basically use that for the back window as well. So I have one, it looks like this. It's also again, the gray reflective. So it will help with that heat and the temperature regulation. And it just folds up like this. And I will insert some pictures here of what it looks like when I have it in action, so to speak. Um, I did use a Starbucks cup that I jammed between the headrest from the passenger seat and the ceiling and that Starbucks cup is there for a reason. It is pushing the window shade up against the back windshield so that you don't have a gap going around the outside edge where people can kind of see in or at least they can see light. And I didn't want that. I didn't want people to see if I had a light on in the car. So for maximum privacy, putting something here helped keep that shade up actually against the window. For my front window screen, I had a, another reflective one. It, this one just folds out and then you tuck it under the mirrors that come down in the front seat. And it pretty much just covers the entire front window. I highly recommend having other sources of lighting that are not the lights in your car or your phone. So the reason for this is because your phone battery is precious, especially when you have limited access to electricity, depending on how remote you're planning to go with this. Your car also, of course, has to be on for the lights to work in the inside of the car. So it's really important to have some other ways of lighting your car. I ended up having three other things that I was using on a consistent basis. So the first one was string lights, which went around the top perimeter of the roof of my car. These I had attached to the ceiling via safety pins. And I can actually vouch for this because I've actually had these in my car for years and safety pins is a great way to attach them. You don't have the sticky residue that you might have with glue or tape and you also don't have holes from drilling in hardware to the ceiling that you might be using to keep those lights in place. The Christmas lights are great because they 
provide light source from all angles as opposed to a headlight or a spotlight or a flashlight, even on your phone, which is just light directed in one direction. The second source of light I had was this small battery operated light with a dimmer on it. This I actually found at a small convenience store near Mount Rainier and it was a total impulse purchase, you guys. It was right by the cash register and I was waiting in line for a while and I just couldn't help but take it home and try it out. This ended up working out great and I only changed the batteries once. I ended up using it for the remainder of my travels. It was great because you can control the intensity of the light. It's a little bit hard to tell in the daylight, but if I cut to a nighttime shot for you, you can see just how much of a difference that dimming can make in how much light you have in your car. The best way I found to attach it was via command strips to the ceiling. I tried some other methods, but the command strips ended up being the winner here. The other great thing about that is because command strips are kind of like Velcro, so they kind of glued together like this, I can also remove the light and use it as an extra flashlight if it needed. My third source of light was this super fashionable headlamp right here. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but it's super nice to be able to use a light and have your hands free at the same time. And I really love this headlamp that I have. So it tilts forward like this so that you can control the angle of the light. And then it's rechargeable. So you can charge it even in your car, your cigarette lighter while you're driving, which I did very often. And it also has multiple modes. So there is a red light mode, red blinking light mode, and then we can change to white light too. So that is the bright mode, a dimmer white mode, and then we have white flashing mode. So it has five modes. I've had this headlamp for years. I originally got it for running and I ended up using it throughout the trip. Another way I used it quite often was to put it on the back headrest and then where I'd be sleeping, it would basically be a light above me on that headrest that I could really easily press because I didn't wanna be sleeping with a headlamp on obviously. The difference between having a headlamp and not is huge because when you have a headlamp, you have both hands free. When you're using your phone as your flashlight or even a regular flashlight, you have one hand that's already taken up and that can make some things significantly harder to do once it's gotten dark. The last thing I'll recommend is kind of a weird one, but this one especially goes for anybody with long hair who's watching. I highly recommend having some kind of a wider headband or maybe a hat that is a barrier between your head and the ceiling. I really like this kind of headband because I can sleep with it easily as well. There's not enough space between the way I had my bed set up and the ceiling for me to sit up all the way. And so what would happen is my hair would get static electricity to the ceiling of the car and I would end up with sort of matted hair and it's taking a long time to brush out and to keep up with that, which is already hard enough when you're camping. The, the solution for that was to have a wider headband. So I'll show you this one here, but that provided a barrier between my hair and the ceiling to prevent that from happening. This particular headband that I'm wearing today is from the brand called Turtle Fur. I like it because it's not so tight that it gives me a headache, but it's also not so loose that I find it sliding off my hair or my head. If you need a brand recommendation, that's a starting point for you. I'll link it down below. I also wanted to mention the thing about hair because that's something that I would have never thought about as being a potential issue when I started camping in my car. The last thing I wanted to talk about is not so much a product or something that you should include in your car, but it's more about how you set up your car. If you have a compact car like I do, the trunk is separate from the body of the car. So the things that you put in the trunk are things that, for example, people can't see when they look into your car. So I would highly suggest putting any valuables into the trunk of the car when you're traveling. Alongside that, any stuff that you might need during the night when you're sleeping, I highly suggest that you put it into the body of the car with you. For me, it was important when I got to a campground to not draw too much attention to the fact that I was a woman traveling alone. And so I didn't wanna be making a ton of trips from getting out of the car, going to the back, opening the trunk, getting stuff out. I didn't want people to be seeing me more than they needed to. I definitely have a lot more organizational tips and also safety tips, especially for women traveling alone that I could share. I can definitely put those in a separate video. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in in the comments down below. I also want to challenge you guys to keep thinking more creatively and outside the box to come up with solutions to some of the problems that might come your way. Things are rarely as black and white as they look at first. And even if it feels like we're choosing one extreme or another, a lot of the time there's a middle ground and another option that we haven't even considered yet. So I want to challenge you to keep looking for those solutions in your life.
Let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments down below. Did you find this video to be helpful? Have you ever camped in a car? Are you more willing to try it now that you've watched this video? Do you have other friends that do if you haven't personally? I'm curious to hear your experience. As always, thank you so much for taking the time and watching. Until next time, bye!